this isn't uh, who wins, this is uh, uh, solving a uh, pathway to decarbonized uh, transportation. We think electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are complementary. When it comes down to it, the objective here has to be uh, transforming our, our total transportation system and, and making it a, a zero carbon path that is uh, commercially viable, deployable across all sections and segments. There's an awful lot of uh, historic discomfort around things like the Hindenburg. That's that's one that folks always reference, you know. And and what we've seen consistently is that you know if you treat hydrogen in a well organized and, and respectful manner, as we have in all industrial gases, it is a perfectly reasonable fuel to use. Education is is critical for people just to even understand that Toyota sells a fuel cell vehicle. It's not just about Toyota to to bring the solution, right? This is about the whole hydrogen economy that's out there, right? So when you think about what makes fuel cell vehicles work is you have to have the hydrogen, you have to have the stations, and you have to have the vehicles. So in the same way that we're building momentum, the rest of that hydrogen economy is also building momentum. Now companies have their own sustainability goals and their own targets. It's the customers and the end users that are actually pulling others forward because they're saying in order for us to meet the goals that we've said to our shareholders by 2030 or 2050, we need to have these technologies. I think that's why people feel like the, the momentum is really here now and the time, time is now. When we produce hydrogen via electrolysis, you split a water molecule and you split it into hydrogen and oxygen. And in a fuel cell, what we do is we put our, our hydrogen back into the, the, the fuel cell and it recombines hydrogen uh, and the, the oxygen. And in doing so, an electron runs around an external circuit and that is the electrical charge that you, you, you gather. We've been working on fuel cells for about 25 years. So this is, it's, it's not a new thing. The difference between maybe a battery electric vehicle and a fuel cell vehicle is not that much, right? You know, you're using the same sort of electrification. It's got the same electric motor. You're having the similar, uh, you know, controls that are on it. It's just the difference of how big of a battery you need on there or if you're using hydrogen as your source of energy to actually move you forward. The advantage of a fuel cell electric vehicle, it can refuel very quickly. So it's a very similar experience to say a diesel uh, vehicle. You can refuel it in 15 minutes and whether that's a truck or a bus or a train or a ferry. Um, also the higher power requirements, because in order to have a fully electric truck, for example, you would have to have a significant amount of batteries that would be heavy and that would reduce the payload. And so all of those customers that are in commercial vehicles and trucks, they're using those trucks for a purpose, right? To deliver goods. And if you reduce the amount of goods that they're able to deliver, that's a bad business model for them. So um, in those larger vehicles and applications, that's where fuel cells are an advantage over battery electric. Challenges in the fuel cell space has been infrastructure. So you need to be able to refuel these vehicles. That's one thing. The other is the cost, uh, both the initial cost of a, of a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle um, and the total cost of ownership. Now that's been coming down significantly over time and, and it will continue to do so. I think there's a couple elements. One is the cost of hydrogen itself, green hydrogen, for example, which is hydrogen that would be made from renewable energy. Part of that we've seen the cost of renewable energy, so wind or solar have obviously come down tremendously, and that's a big input into the cost of producing hydrogen and producing that green hydrogen. So you need the cost of the fuel to come down, and then you also need the cost of the equipment. With any emerging technology, one of the big challenges is that manufacturing piece. So high cost of manufacturing, especially in, in new technologies, is quite common. So moving it to that industrial scale production, you know, large scale standards that we would see in any other manufacturing industry, improvement against, you know, kind of uh, manufacturing errors and things like that, drive costs down rather dramatically. So as you, you have a maturing in the technology and the supply chains around the components improve, you also get significant cost savings there, as well as those just pure manufacturing gains that we see in every sector. When we think about sort of the generations of developments of fuel cell uh, stacks and modules, we are now getting at a point where, you know, we have that level of power and efficiency that are coming out of those platforms to really be a good cost solution for, for the applications that they're being put in. As a hydrogen economy, you know, we have to think about how all the different sort of uh, players come together and actually help to, to solve the, the issue as one team. There's a lot of interest in hydrogen hubs right now, a lot of them around the country, uh, a lot of states and a lot of 
areas are looking at it. Uh, they want to get in on the hydrogen economy. Hydrogen hubs are really important as for the industry, for the whole hydrogen economy, I think, to scale up. In most cases, you're looking at being able to produce hydrogen on site. We've seen that uh, on a smaller scale at things like a port. So there's all different kinds of equipment at a port. You have the trucks, the drayage trucks that are taking the goods back and forth, but you also have terminal tractors. You also have other you know, pieces of equipment that can be uh, fueled with hydrogen. How much does policy or, or other things make a difference? That backing in and that encouragement and that confidence from, from whether it's the state or, or the federal government or even other entities that want to support this, just help to give a little bit of a lifting hand to say, hey, we believe in this, even in those sort of maybe uh, transitional times to make sure that, the, that we're being supported in the way to, to help us see us through to, to the end. I think water is like that basic fundamental of life. You know, it's like without water, we don't live, <laughs> right? And I love that it's water that's being used to create this oxygen and hydrogen that's being used to sort of support mobility, right? So that for me, it's like personally a very beautiful picture of, hey, this fundamental of life that we need to be sustaining is also something that can be fundamental in your mobility and transportation, right? And it's something that is in abundance here uh, on the earth.